never seen so many people at the Ljubljana airport. Something special is about to happen. Well, I'm here again at Ljubljana Airport and there's a very special occasion going on today. The Antonov AN124, one of the largest cargo planes in the world, is landing here at this little Ljubljana Airport. It's apparently almost here, it's just past Bled and it's turning around to make its approach. I'm all set. I've got an ISO 800, I've got a polarizer on at the moment because it's uh, the middle of the day, not the most ideal time to be photographing. And because of that, of course, I've whacked up the ISO to make sure I've got a fast enough shutter speed to capture it coming in. Oh, well, I can hear a plane approaching. Hopefully that's it. It's just circling around now, making its approach. I think it's disappeared behind the clouds. There it is. Yeah, I see. There it comes. So it's just making its approach around that way. It's going to make a big turn and come in and come and land in this direction. It was apparently supposed to be kept quiet, but judging by the amount of people here, a lot of people knew what time it was coming. And it's coming, going to come again three, three more times this week, so hopefully I'll see it those times as well, if we can find out the times. Unfortunately the time is not on the schedule, but we managed to get some inf inside information. And now the sun's coming out to give me some extra light, perfect. We've got some nice clouds today, but there's still some sun breaking through, so it's perfect conditions for photographing this plane. If you want to know more about the Ljubljana airport and photo, pho photographing planes here, then uh, check out my other vlog, which I'll put a link to up here now. Okay, here it comes. This massive cargo plane is part of the Antonov Airlines and it's quite an incredible piece of engineering. It has 24 wheels. An exciting moment for the kids. It's on its approach now. I've whacked my aperture down to f9 so as it gets closer. I don't need such a large uh, depth of field, but I do need a fast shutter speed. 
And here it comes. Oh, that was amazing. Everything happens so fast that you have to move quick. I think I've got a few good shots, but hopefully I'll catch it again when it comes in the week and get more opportunities. Well, sadly, that was the only chance I got to photograph this airplane. I was hoping to capture it taking off, but every morning it took off around six in the morning, which was actually before sun up and a bit dark. The one time it was actually supposed to take off at nine o'clock, I went up there and was waiting, but the security guard coming round informed me that the schedule had changed and it was not going to go at nine o'clock that morning, and instead it was going to go at six o'clock the next morning. So I ended up with just these photos, but still it was a great moment and still I got some great photos. Well, unfortunately, as everything happened so quick at the time, I wasn't able to do much filming and tell you much about it on the video itself. As you can see, my family, my kids and their friends were all in the background getting quite excited about it. And of course, once the plane had landed, we all quickly rushed around to the other side to get a closer view of it down at the terminal itself. So uh, I wasn't able to tell you much about it on the video, so I'll tell you a bit about it now. This airplane is the Antonov AN124. It's one of the largest cargo planes in the world and it can carry a payload of up to 150 tons. Amazing. Now, it's part of the Antonov Airlines, which is the Ukrainian airline, and uh, it was last in Slovenia in autumn 2017. As you can see, or you'll see certainly on some of the pictures in a minute, it has 24 landing wheels. An incredible airplane. It's not the biggest. The AN225 Maria uh, this was actually the biggest cargo plane or the biggest airplane in the world. But sadly it was destroyed at Hostomel Airport near Kiev at the start of the war with Russia. Nevertheless, this is an amazing aircraft and a huge aircraft to land at such a tiny airport. As we can see in this picture, the wingspan I think is actually wider than the runway itself. So it was quite an amazing sight to see this plane land and amazing to get some photographs of it. Now you can see I've already processed a few photos. Now the reason I did that is because this kind of event, although great to photograph and great to uh, sell pictures of, it's also newsworthy. So the first thing I did was process some of the best photos of it landing, photos of it there at the airport, some close-up photos with the nose up as they're loading, and what I did was process some of the best ones 
and I immediately sent them off to BAV Media. This is a, a media agency I often send pictures to and they put them out there to see if any of the magazines, newspapers or anything are interested in doing a story on it and potentially use the photos. So it, often when you're doing things like that you have to do very quick so I processed them immediately that evening and got them straight out to the to the people at BAV Media. So that's done. Uh, now I'm going to uh, obviously I'm going to go through and continue to process some of the best photos from this and then I'll put them up for sale as wall art because believe it or not there are a lot of airplane enthusiasts out there and many of them want to buy a picture of an airplane to hang on their wall. To give an example of this here is an image of mine that's sold on ImageKind. ImageKind is another pod based in the US which I sell through and this image netted me 105 US dollars in profit. That was the profit, not the sale. So that's what I made on it. And this was a photo I took a long time ago at Farnborough Air Show. So somebody bought a print of this. And so I made a good amount of money on this. So uh, it's well worth putting images like this. If they're good images of airplanes, it's well worth putting them up for sale on the pod sites as, as prints and wall arts because people really, it's something that is I think quite popular. I actually know a photographer who specializes in this and I think he sells photos all the time. He's really, really successful with it. It's also worth putting images of airplanes up on Alamy for stock because I often sell images like this through Alamy. And my most recent sale actually was this one. Now this one sold, now this is the total sale, $129 and Alamy take 60% of that. Sadly, uh, when I first started out with Alamy, they used to only take 20%, so the photographer got 80% royalty. Now, sadly, that's been eroded, and Alamy now takes 60%, and we get 40%. But it costs nothing to put your images up here for sale, and for the most part, sometimes the sale is quite good. So as you can see here in my breakdown, the sale was for $129, so from that, Alamy took 60%, so they took 77.40, and that left me, minus my balance five, it left me with about $52 for that sale. So it's still not bad, but when you look at 129, you know, it's quite a chunk taken out of it, but it's still not bad overall. $57 is a lot better than one or two dollars that you might make from a sale on some of these microstock sites. So I still, although uh, your commissions through Alamy have waned a lot over the years and some of the sale prices have gone down, it's still the best out of all of them in my opinion. And you still get some of these small sales like this. So this, this sale of the cat was uh, sold for $9. And the other downside too from that is that uh, if it's a distributor sale, in this case it's sold not sold directly through Alamy but it's sold through one of their distributors so Alamy takes 60 percent and the distributor take 40 percent as well and so you're not really left with much in that case so in this case out of that nine dollars uh, I was left with about three dollars in all so you know that's sadly the downside of selling stock there's really not that much money in it nowadays but at the end of the day as well, it costs me nothing to put my images up for sale on Alamy. They don't charge you any fees for being a member. They don't charge any fees for holding your photos. You can simply upload them and leave them there. And maybe they will sell now. Maybe they will sell in several years. Now, this image here, the one that sold for $129, I actually took this image, I think, about four years ago. This was taken at an air show in Maribor in the east of Slovenia and this was maybe about three or four years ago I think I shot this photo and I put it up and it's just sold the first time. So it just goes to show you that you never know. You know if you've got saleable images get them up there on Alamy and just leave them there. You know one day they will sell. I, I've had images that have sold seven eight years after I uploaded them. So, you know, there's no expiry date on them in this respect. If it's a sale of an image, you might find that one day somebody wants to buy it. So going back to my uh, images of the Antonov, as you can see, uh, I've, I've processed a fair few. Um, 
There's still a few more there. I've got several shots. I've got many shots of the airplane approaching, of course, and I will pick out a few of the best. I've got shots of the airplane landing. I've got shots of the airplane there at the airport. Now, one of the things when you're shooting through the fence, it's very, very tricky uh, to ensure that you don't get the, the wires of the fence in the image. Here's a good example of where it's failed. So the trick is to use a large aperture and a long zoom. So the further you zoom in and the larger the aperture, the more likely you're going to, um, you're going to go between the wires and you're going to blur those wires so much that they no longer appear. So this will shot through yeah? and you cannot see the, the fence wiring at all in this image. So it is possible to do that, but there is an art to it, of course. So I've got several photos, as I said, um, I'm not going to do them all here. We'll we'll just process one from the approach. Now I processed that one already and I sent it off. But this one here I quite like because I quite like the dark cloud over the plane itself just as it approached here. So let's process that one now for the purposes of this video. So you can see up here, as I said in the video, uh, I needed a fast shutter speed because the airplane was coming in fast. I was panning and moving with a really long heavy lens. So uh, to, uh, to make sure that I didn't get any camera shake or blurring, I wanted to make sure I had a really fast shutter speed. So I set my ISO to 800. An aperture of f9 ensured that uh, I got all of the airplane in focus. So if we zoom in on the airplane itself, you can see that everything is in focus. We don't need a super depth of field here because we're just photographing the airplane against the sky. So uh, the F9 and ISO 800 allowed me to get a shutter speed of one two thousandth of a second. So plenty to ensure that, that, it, that the airplane was nice and sharp and there was no blurring at all in the image. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this image is I wanna bring out the, the shadow detail and brighten up the airplane itself a bit. So let's go to the settings here and the shadows. So let's pull up the shadows a bit. There we go. So we've lightened the airplane a bit. Now we can bring up the whites too. So I'd like to bring up the whites to bring out the white of that airplane and the white of the sky behind. That's really nice. But I also want to keep those black clouds. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to try and pull this back down a bit, or I'm going to try and pull down the highlights here. So let's find a bit of a compromise. There we go. I can uh, make some more highlights adjustments in Photoshop, which I will do. So I can bring back some of this uh, dark brooding cloud that was lost just here. I can try a touch of dehaze. Now the dehaze tool, though it wasn't hazy, it also does help to give it a bit of texture and contrast. It's a really nice tool to use. Vibrance we don't really need. Maybe just a touch to bring out the, the colors here. I'm not going to bother with the saturation. I think that's, that's nice enough as it is. So that's it. It's that simple really. There's not a lot needs doing here in Adobe Camera Raw. So I'll open that into Photoshop. And as I said, we'll go to the highlights tool here. Well, the highlights tool is a bit funny sometimes in images like this. It doesn't seem to darken it much. If I have, I have to bring it right up like this and, and actually looks doesn't look right. It, it, it's made all the colors look wrong. So in this case, I'm not going to bother with the highlights tool and I'm going to come to the curves tool and I'm going to try to pull down the contrast in the sky there that way. There you go. Now I've darkened those clouds. I want to compensate for that by bringing this up. I want to lighten this a bit. There we go.
How's that look? I like that. And one more thing I think we could do here is go to our levels and just pull up those whites a touch more. Bring that back because I really want to retain the white of that sky and the white of the airplane without making it too blue. There's still a bit too much of a blue tinge here so to, to compensate for that I'm going to go to the hue saturation. Select the blues and try to desaturate those blues a bit. There we go. Let's look at the difference now. There you go. Now that's taken some of that editing has, has added too much of a blue hue to it. So by uh, taking down the the saturation of the blues, we've got rid of that. So there you go. There's the difference. That's the image in raw, and that's the image processed. So I'll save that now as a TIFF. So let's now keyword this. Now I've already got, obviously, a template save because I did these earlier. So let's go down and find that template. Antonov Bernique Landing. There we go. I've got my description set already. I've got all my keywords, appropriate keywords, the airlines, the plane, the plane number, location and everything. So these are all important keywords to help people find it when you put it up on the pods. And also when you put it up on Alamy, because it's the same there, uh, everything is imported and it saves you a lot of time if you do it here in Photoshop embed it into the picture and then in most cases wherever you upload it all of these descriptions and keywords will be imported so i'll save that as always go to 100 percent check your image at 100 percent to make sure that uh, everything first of all is nice and sharp because sometimes it may look sharp but when you zoom in close you realize it isn't so we do that and where there's a lot of sky involved it's very very important that you scrutinize your image for any dust spots and when you use a large aperture there's less dust spots when you use a very small aperture so when you're doing landscape photography and you're using a very small aperture to get that front to back sharpness you'll find a lot more dust spots appear on your image but when you use a large aperture there's less dust spots so that's quite good but still they're there so it's important to scrutinize your image to make sure because especially first of all if you've got dust spots on there and somebody buys a super large print of your image and there's a big dust spot on that they're going to send it straight back so you don't want that second of all if you do upload to Alamy Alamy will scrutinize your images for any dust spots and if they find a single dust spot on one image they will reject the whole batch so although it's tiring and laborious it's an important part of the process so that's done and that's saved now I will convert to 8 bits convert to profile and save my JPEG Job done. So on my main WordPress website, I have an airplane gallery. So when I have processed and selected the best images from that shoot, I will put them up here for sale. And in SmugMug, I don't actually have an airplane gallery. It's uh, one thing I've been meaning to do. So it's a good opportunity now to show you how you do that. If you have, if you come into your uh, organize, if you click organize in your smug mug site, just simply come to create, select gallery and create a new gallery. So I can call it just simply airplanes for now. We'll give it a description, photos of airplanes from around the world and airplanes aircraft give it all the different spellings actually because people spell it differently airplanes aircraft 
aviation and uh, we've got I'm going to have the Antonov Antonov here we'll keep the custom URL here and click create and upload the photo so to get that started I will upload the first photo from there actually I've got a few there so uh, I can upload this one this one this was quite a good one of it landing uh, this one of it at the airport and this one of it loading and here why not upload them all with uh, Fine Art America again I can upload I won't upload them all now uh, otherwise this video will just go on far too long again I'll upload the one that we've just done and as I've sold an airplane photo on ImageKind I'll probably put it up here too so I go to my portfolio upload the images I'll change the gallery I'll just put it in general for now and that's it so that's uploaded to all three that's done I've got an airplane gallery there so I'll put that in there general submit that's now for sale on Fine Art America and once I've put it up here in my WordPress gallery I will link it to my product page on Fine Art America these are all done so I can close this and now I've got images there I can go to settings and choose a featured image so we can choose that one that's now my featured image now that's saved and now I can view this gallery on the site now this is a new gallery in my smug mug website and there it is and these are immediately available for sale so there you have it uh, I hope you found that useful as always and if you did then please give this video a like if you're new to this channel then please subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you can uh, check out all my new videos and please also go go back and have a look at some of my older videos too so thanks for watching and catch you later bye bye